What does the stock float and why does this matter? Well, first we need to understand that the stock market moves because of supply and demand. When the supply is low and the demand is high, the stock is gonna rise. But if the demand is low and the supply is high, the stock is going to fall. So the supply is literally the number of shares that each company has available. And every company listed on the stock market has a fixed number of shares available. Facebook has 2 billion shares. Apple has 4 billion shares. GoPro has 105 million shares. And these numbers are total shares. There's no more, no less, and this is a stock supply. Now, this total amount is called outstanding shares. And to evaluate a company, all you have to do is take the total amount of outstanding shares and multiply it by its stock price. So if a company called ABC had 10 million outstanding shares and its stock price was $5, you would multiply 10 million by $5. And you would know that company ABC is a $50 million company. But there are two types of shares that make up total shares restricted shares and unrestricted shares. Restricted shares are held by company insiders. So these shares are held by employees that are given compensation in the form of stock. Lots of companies do this. They offer uh, shares of stock on top of salary, but those shares can't be immediately sold. Usually there's some time restriction or work performance goal that needs to be met in order for the employee to actually sell the shares. Then there's unrestricted shares. These are shares that anyone from the public can buy and sell. These are the shares that when you log into your broker and you want to buy shares of a stock, you're going to be buying these kind of shares. So let's say from our 10 million outstanding share example, 2 million was restricted shares. The 8 million shares that are left over are unrestricted shares, and these are the shares that are available to the public to freely buy and sell within each other. This 8 million shares is the float, and this is important because this is literally the available supply of that stock. And the reason we care about how much supply a stock has is because if that stock is experiencing increasing demand, the stock price is going to rise. So let me show you an example here from a, a small company called Marin Software Incorporated. Now, this is an advertising company. And on December 18th, this particular day, this stock or this company released news that they scored a major contract with the giant Google. I mean, for a small advertising company, as you see, the stock's traded around $3 during this time. For a small company like this to score a contract with a major player such as Google, that's really good news. This could be the news to lift this company off the ground and make a name for itself. So over the next couple of days, the stock went from $3 all the way to $12. So in order for a stock to make a move, that quickly, there has to be a major imbalance between supply and demand. So when a company released news like this, it increases the demand. Lots of outsiders say, wow, you know, this, this could be the news to lift that company off the ground. I want to get in. They scored a contract with Google. I like it. I want to buy. So you have all these people wanting to buy shares. But the problem with MRIN is there's not a lot of supply. So let me show you how you can find the supply. And when I say supply, I mean the float, as we discussed earlier. One thing you can do is go to yahoofinance.com. And at the top, you can just type in the symbol. So we'll type in MRIN. It's a symbol of the stock we just looked at. And come over to uh, statistics, this tab right here. You're going to click that, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see share statistics. And a couple rows down, you'll see shares outstanding and float. Remember, shares outstanding is the total amount of shares that the company has, but there are some restricted shares in there, which you can't trade. And that gives us the float. So for the public, for me and you to trade, we're trading out of this 
one big giant pool, and that pool consists of 3.8 million shares. Now, that's really small. 3.8 million, as you saw in the slide, well, I'll just show you right here, Facebook. Facebook has a float of 3.9 billion shares. Um, Bank of America has... Uh, is that... No, I typed in Boeing. B-A-C, sorry. Bank of America has 9.49 billion shares. And then a tiny company like MRIN, only 3.8 million, that's very small float. So when a company has very little supply and such huge demand, what has to happen for uh, the supply and demand to balance out? The price has to go up. Because you may have, let me go back here, you may have people that are holding shares, maybe they bought it at $3, and they're holding shares, maybe they bought it at $4. They're holding, in order for the supply to be released, or the supply to increase, people have to sell shares. And the people that want to buy those shares, they basically need to entice the sellers to sell. And in order for that to happen, the price has to go up. So if the price you know, increase to $6. If people bought at $3 and the price went up to $6, that might entice the people that bought at 3 to say, man, I just made a 100% return. I'll, I'll sell my shares. So when they sell their shares, they're going to release more supply to an increasing demand market. And when the demand is there, supply has to kind of balance itself out. And in order for that to happen, price has to increase. So maybe the people that bought at six, maybe the people that bought at six says, okay, I bought at six. I'll sell my shares. I'll release the supply. I'll release my shares if the price goes up. So uh, there's more demand. Maybe there's a lot more demand still at six. Lots of people say, you know, six, I think that's pretty cheap. Man, I think this thing could keep going. You'll get some people willing to pay $9 for it. So you have people at $9. Maybe the people that bought at 6 says, okay, I'll be glad to release my shares. So then the people at 9 buy. And, and this keeps going on and on and on until uh, the, the, the demand is not really there anymore. So maybe there's not as much demand at 12 and that causes the price to go down. Now, one thing that you have to understand on these really low float stocks is pretty much just as fast as they go up, they go down because low float stocks are pretty much just pure momentum based. So uh, lots of people are just fighting for these shares, getting in, getting out, getting in and out, getting in and getting out, just basically taking little bits of profit, profit, sell. I'll buy little bits of profit, sell. So this just keeps going on so much that what ends up happening is the stock ends up trading multiple times the amount of shares that it has available. And we call this float rotation. So you see, we'll take a look at this candle right here. Look at the volume that it had on that day. 20 million shares traded. How can a stock that has only 3.8 million shares available have 20 million shares traded in one day? It's because people are constantly just fighting over each other, just getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out. And these shares are just constantly rotating uh, just throughout the public, just constantly, constantly just going around. And this is what we call float rotation. So whenever you see a stock have, you know, three times float rotation, four times, ten times float rotation, that's going to be a really, really big mover. So um, it's one of those stocks that you, you kind of have to just learn to get in, get out very quickly because, as you saw here, most of these low float stocks, they go up and then they go down. So these aren't really meant to hold for a very long time. I mean, as you see, that just during that time period, this is the move, and then uh, the news kind of dies off, the demand wears off, and then people move on to the next big thing. And that's why these low float stocks... Uh, you know, they, they get some kind of news, this, the stock rises up, and then uh, people sell their shares looking for that next big mover. 
So um, that's why float is really important when you're looking for really strong stocks because if we took something like um, if we took something like uh, you know you know Facebook okay Facebook if it came out with some really good news it's not going to make a huge move it's not going to go up like MRIN did it's not going to go up 400 percent in four days because the supply is so large there's just way too much supply. So, you know, that's what's important whenever you're in a stock and you're looking for those big momentum breakouts, you got to take a look at the flow and see, okay, does this have a chance to make a really major run? If the float's too high, it's probably not going to. But if the float is really low, then there's a good chance that it's going to make a major run. So that is float and why it's important. Thank you so much for watching.